Before we begin, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, ZenThreadShop.com. This amazing website not only has great apparel, bath products, jewelry, and more, but they also donate a portion of their net proceeds to Beyond Giving, a 501c3 organization that currently provides funding to create and staff a nonprofit training center at which the underserved will acquire the entrepreneurial skills uh, they need to become self-sufficient. By entering the code ZTSROOM6 at checkout, you'll not only be helping the community, but saving 20% off your order too. It's a win-win all around. Thanks Zen Thread Shop for being a sponsor and thank you for watching. Now on to the show. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh and uh, today, a little different, I thought I'd tell you guys a tale from my musical youth. Those halcyon days when I was 21, the only member of the band allowed to stay in the bar after our set and clueless about how strange the music scene can be. Strap in kiddos, cause Uncle Josh is gonna tell you a story. If you're enjoying the content Room 6 is putting up, please make sure you subscribe down there and hit the bell so you don't miss an episode. While you're at it, feel free to like and share. And uh, yeah, let's go. The year was 1995. The band was Magic Viewing Patch. There's a story behind the name. We were playing some dive bar in downtown San Diego, and it was the first gig we played that wasn't a house party. I was singing. Nate Young was on bass. Matt Strickland was our drummer, Ryan Fisher was on keys, and John Paul Reed rocked lead guitar. Considering everyone in the band but me had migrated from their high school band, high school marching band, we were actually really good. We were really solid sounding. So there we were, playing to two drunks and a bartender for two hours. Our sound had been compared to Eddie Vedder singing with the Stones, I was the Eddie Vedder part, and it fit perfectly. Unfortunately, the two barflies didn't seem to appreciate this complex musical tapestry we were weaving. They didn't heckle. They didn't yell. They didn't even ask us to turn down. Instead, one of them stood up, stumbled to the door, which was right by the stage, stopped next to our guitarist, and proceeded to rip out the cable from his distortion pedal, right in the middle of a solo. Suddenly, there goes all guitar in the band. <laughs> Looking back, it was genius as protests go, but needless to say, we were a little upset. Fortunately, everyone had the presence of mind to keep playing while John Paul fixed the problem. It was a simple fix, just plug it back in. <laughs> when I think about this moment, I laugh about it now, but man, it took a long time to get over it. Now, however, I wish I knew that guy's name so I could thank him for the lesson. We discovered that night that we could handle any weirdness that came our way, on stage and off stage, and there would be weirdness. <laughs> Fortunately, we didn't let that stop us from doing more shows and even winning a battle of the bands uh, playing in front of a thousand high schoolers that all knew the guys in the band. I hope you will keep this in mind as you play your shows and try to remember that even if your music's not right for one crowd, the right crowd is out there just waiting for you to hit the stage. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and you'll like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell. If you like what you see, please consider clicking a link down in the description below to support the channel, either Patreon or maybe buy one of my CDs. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please click here. If you would like to subscribe, please click here. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you again next time in Room 6.